hi there this is our third topic for the course ABE 180 and in this lecture we will discuss in detail the the design of material handling equipment for grains now um, from harvest to post harvest operations you're actually transporting the grains there's actually movements or let's say conveyance of grains from one place one place to another and even in the post harvest systems itself like for example the rice milling operations uh, when you say rice milling meaning um, f from from the paddy so let's say the paddy grains there's there's still husk okay so there's uh, rice husk here and then here's your let's say the rice and of course there's a brown layer that's called the brown now it, when it undergoes a milling operations this this grain is actually being transported from one equipment to another so let's say first it will be transported to or it will undergo through a cleaner grain uh, grain cleaner because um, from harvest there's going to be some foreign materials let's say uh, stones or any uh, any materials that's not that's not um, it's not a potty so it has to be separated now so after that after the cleaning then there's going to be probably let's say a husking operation so so the husking operations it has to remove this um, this rice husk and, and separate that from from the from this grain inside or let's say the rice kernel now so after that it has to be transported again to to other equipment so in that transportation there are actually sp um, equipment or specific equipment to do the task Okay, so especially when we're dealing with high volumes or high productions, if if this transportation or movement of grains is to be done manually, then then that's not going to be enough. So that's the reason why we incorporate these equipment so that we can we can have the operation um, in uh, we can have this operation um, be be efficient and also effective okay so that's the point of this um, material handling equipment now let's discuss the overview of the of this handling equipment that um, we will study in detail okay so first we have the bucket elevators bucket elevators they're actually or commonly they're equipment for transporting materials in a vertical position although it's also possible or there are also designs or equipment where in the bucket elevators are designed to be in an inclined but for us here we'll only consider the uh, the vertical ones okay so this is commonly found you can f f uh, find this in a grain silo equipment so when loading the silos or the beans they're actually loaded um, by this it could be bucket elevators or some secondary um, let's say secondary um, equipment here okay so that's also possible this is this type of equipment is also found in in rice milling rice milling operations or or rice mill equipment so you will also notice this one now the transportation of this is actually you're loading the materials here and then there are actually a belt here that's um, this this belt is actually continuous and this belt is equipped with with buckets okay so if we try to zoom it to zoom in for example this is our belt and this belt 
I will just draw a three dimensional view and this build is equipped with a bucket okay so um, once the, uh, the material is loaded here then the bucket will transport the material from the from the bottom to the top and then throw the materials here on on top okay so that's one back elevator another one is the screw conveyor now screw conveyors they're also common and the principle of operation is that there's just actually something like a let's say a an enclosed um, let's say casing or u trough so it could be cylindrical or let's say in this this shape letter u with a cover here on top and inside here you'll you'll actually uh, you will actually find a screw okay so meaning it's like this okay i don't know how to do <laughs> draw this one correctly but there's a screw here that once you rotate the screw and you you feed the material here let's say on this left so once this once this screw rotates then it can actually transport the material here so let's say you have an outlet on this side then the the material will exit at this point okay so that's how a screw conveyor works now another one is the belt conveyor now for the belt conveyor it's almost um in principle it's still something like this uh, except that it has no buckets and it's usually on a horizontal position or it can be on a incline okay so the belts that's a flat belt and it's actually if you if you if you try to to see the section here what you'll actually found is that there are um, these belts they are actually uh, formed or configured in this uh, u-trough okay and then the material is loaded here on top okay and then this one they're just idlers but both ends of these belt conveyors they're actually pulleys and if this one rotates then of course the there will be a transport of 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 material from this let's say from this point to to this point okay so you would see the difference that the belt the belt conveyor actually this one the the material is not actually in 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 motion as compared to uh to the screw conveyor when i say in motion they're not actually mixing they're just relatively uh sitting sitting in place something like this whereas in a screw conveyor you're actually there's going to be mixing inside here so there are materials that's uh, that's good for for this let's say for screw conveyors and there are um, situations or materials we're in we should use this belt conveyor now for the last equipment that we'll discuss although there's still many other uh, material handling equipment but this ones these four uh, examples they are actually the ones that's uh, most common and also commonly included in in our reference text in agricultural engineering Now the last one will um, will have a pneumatic conveyor. Now the pneumatic conveyor, the principle is it's actually a transportation due to, uh, let's say, due or let's say a transportation of the material by by using air. Now, for example, we have this um, 
and say this is our our hopper and we are going to transport uh, let's say we have a fan here and then this will let's say transport to a container okay so let's see there's a container over here okay so let's say if you if you put in the materials the the cranes here then with the aid of this fan or this this blower it's actually going to be transported from this point to whichever point you would you would like okay so that's the pneumatic conveyor now here this um, will be able to to appreciate the aerodynamic properties of the materials when we discuss the pneumatic conveyor now in this week we'll only discuss the backhand elevators and then the screw conveyors then next week we'll discuss the belt and then the pneumatic conveyor Okay, so now um, in our lecture handouts, I've included there the physical characteristics of the material to be handled. Um, that's, I mean, to be considered uh, before selecting a um, selecting an equipment. Okay, and in table three one, I've included there. The properties, let's say the bulk densities, the moisture content, angle of rep uh, of repose of selected agricultural products. I'd also like to point out that there's this um, organization or association abbreviated as CEMA so that stands for uh, conveyor equipment manufacturers association now if you want to to delve into the standards and let's say the um, let's say the requirements or best practices when it comes to conveyors let's say bucket elevators or whatever then uh, I think they're the ones that's most commonly um, referred to when it comes to this um, these material handling equipment okay and they have also classified materials in terms of uh, let's say if your if your material is relatively lightweight free flowing and non corrosive then that's class one and then there's also class two class three and class four okay so you, you, that's I just included that in our lecture handouts for for reference only. Okay, so enough of this. We'll we'll talk about the um, the bucket elevators in details. Okay, so bucket elevators they are actually material handling equipment consisting of buckets attached to. Uh, a chain or belt so it's possible if it's a uh, belt or chain in uh, regular intervals okay so if we try to to draw that we have actually this belt for example and on this belt there are actually pockets that's actually spaced an, an interval okay so meaning that there is spacing from this point to here so that's say uh, that's that's that belt that's bucket uh, spacing okay and this one is the belt and this one is the um, buckets okay so on top on top of this uh, equipment there this belt is actually attached to a let's say a a top pulley 
Okay, so there's a top pulley and then there's also a bottom pulley. Okay, so this belt here is actually running continuously continuously on this um, uh, between these pulleys. Okay, so this one on top is referred to as the head pulley and this one is referred to as the tail or sometimes bottom pulley okay so this is actually enclosed this these back elevators um i mean these buckets on the belts they actually enclosed um, in a casing Okay, so if we draw that, if we draw the, let's say we draw the elevation view, then we're going to have something like this. Okay, and the pulley will be here, the bottom pulley, and we have the... Um, let's say the head pulley and we have the belt and the pockets here okay so the term for this top is called the head and then this one uh, at the bottom is called the boot and in between this is the elevator legs okay so the head of of the pulley is okay, the head of the pulley is where the material is going to be well, discharged okay so the feeding would be at the bottom so that could be on this uh, let's say the upside one's going up and the other side is actually going that's going down Okay, so the loading could be upside loading or downside loading. So later on in the calculation, we'll be able to use that. Now, in this head pulley, this is actually, so, I mean, the question is, how does this um, belt with balance rotates? It's actually attached to a, a power source here. So let's say an electric motor. So an electric motor is connected to a pulley and then there's going to be pulley here and then they're, they're connected in some, in some way. Okay, so this will be the power source and then it will drive this belt configuration. Okay, so with regard to the leg, the leg can be also a solid one or I mean, can be single leg. If you see a casing that's actually um, totally enclosed, but if you see, okay, so if you see a leg that's configured this way, so let's say this is the the casing, then that's gonna be a, a double leg. Now on the boot section we have this feeding um, let's say feeding hopper or inlet and then at the bottom there's uh, it has to be provided with a clean out and also this one at the bottom um, usually there's um, there's this take up unit so let's write take up unit so meaning that um, it's a unit actually that's responsible for for correcting the tension now through time after some operations this belt is actually loosening its um, tension so it should be adjusted by this um, take up unit okay so what else 
um, how do we attach a pocket to to a belt okay so how do you attach the pockets they're actually uh, they can be bought in a standard dimensions and this this pockets they have holes here for the bolts and if you try to see the section let's say this is the the belt and then this is the the pocket then we have bolts here specifically for 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 back elevators and it looks like a flat head bolt but it's it's more precise i think if you just say back elevator bolts and there are also specific terms for this but that is how it is um, connected okay so it has to be flat because when it runs to this pulley then if it's not flat then there's going to be bumps on the uh, on the motion now let's talk about the types of bucket elevators we have centrifugal uh, we also have positive and the third one we have continuous okay so for the centri centrifugal the centrifugal is actually discharging the grains okay, let's say discharging by throwing okay so meaning if we draw the head of a bucket elevator here then there's actually throwing here whereas in positive we have um, the discharging of the material is just by gravity so if we try to draw it here then we have this pulley and then the um, discharge just something like this okay so compared to the centrifugal type it's actually um, operating in a higher speed because um, it was able to throw the materials for us this one it's not okay and then there's um, additional something like an idler idler pulley here or something and for this continuous it's actually they actually okay so let me draw first okay so for this continuous type it's actually the discharging method is that the the back of this um, let's say this packet it actually it's actually the ones that's serving the uh, or let's say that's doing the discharge okay so the packet on top will um, will discharge its material on the back of this packet and then uh, the discharge method will be something like this okay so that's gonna be continuous all right so now let's talk about the calculations now for the calculations we have belt width and length okay so if we try to draw let's say we have this um, let's say top view let's say this is our pulley then this will be our belt okay so let's say this is our belt and this will be our bucket okay so the the belt width and length for the belt width let's say this is our bucket dimension by the way our bucket dimension is something like this so it's given in a 
um, manufacturers specifications or probably in the tables or in their brochures you can find this so it's already a standard um, a standard material or standard part so that can be made from plastics or steel or whatever okay so this dimension it's actually the length so that's the length and here the dimension from this top point to this point that's what we call the depth or sometimes they call it height and this one this is the projection okay so if you try to draw that in a side view this is the projection okay so since you have the length already then to determine the belt width you have to add only says 25 mm so it doesn't say 25 mm on this side or only or on both sides so that depends upon uh, the designer or probably the applications or constraints so for us here let's just use we'll add 25 mm here and then another 25 mm on this size unless otherwise it's specified now again um, it doesn't say I mean our reference text doesn't say that the 25 mm is for both sides it just say that uh, you have to add 25 mm to this uh, belt or to this bucket length okay so it can be let's say 12.5 mm on this side and then 12.5 mm on this side so that's also possible now for the pulley width the pulley will be uh, greater than the the belt width now for the pulley width we, we have to refer to our past 302 2000 that's uh, specifications for for flat belts now in table 9 it actually states that for example if you have a belt width of 300 mm uh, I think that's 305 mm less than then you have to add um, an allowance of 25 mm but if you have um, let's say um, 305 to 610 then you have to add say 51 mm and then over 610 then you have something like this okay so we have to refer to that um, to this standard all right so now how do we know the um, diameter for us here we will assume that the um, we have to make assumptions um, regarding the diameter in relation to the width so we can write for example if we have sample problems later on let's say the width of pulley is equal to the um, diameter of the pulley so meaning if you have a width of example you have a 300 mm width then the diameter okay so you'll also have 300 mm okay so it's something like this of course we have to check also the minimum diameter as provided in this bias 302 depending upon our belt material but so far that's how our, we are going to do the calculation for this um, for this pulley width and belt widths and the diameter of the pulley for the belt length we have um, we have three methods of joining the belts or splicing the belts for splicing the belts okay so because when you when you buy the belt material then you're the ones that's going to 
determine the length so you just have to to cut your desired uh, your desired length and then just do a splicing so that you can have a continuous operation now I guess I don't have much time now I'll I'll continue this discussion on the next video.